Okay, working. Fantastic. Un poco menos de luz, dicen. Uh, so, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for bringing me here. It's a pleasure. I've learned a lot. And thank you all, because I learned one thing I didn't know was the acronym STEM, for which I realized math is not science. I'm a mathematician. So the science, technology, engineering, and math. So uh, there's yet another thing I'm out of. So everywhere I go, I feel I'm out. You, you know, going to a wedding, you say you're a mathematician, that stops the conversation. So you feel outside everywhere, and even here. So please treat better the mathematicians. Um, uh, I'm here because I took part in a contest, a monologue contest called FameLab, as uh, Gonzalo explained to you. It's an international contest of monologues in which in three minutes you have to explain something, some scientific concept or something like that. So I did math. And I happened to win the Spain contest. Maybe because I'm from a very small village and I'm a mathematician, they say, poor guy, let's give him the prize. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here. And this is uh, wha what I spoke about, was about theorems and conjectures in math, which is a crucial point in mathematics. Uh, people ask me sometimes, why do I do math? Why do I do science? Because most of the people are not as smart as you and they confuse, they think math is science. No, now we know it's not. And, and I say I have no reason why I do math, why well, I love math, but I, I love, uh, you know, Richard Feynman, the physicist, has a beautiful quote that I love to, to tell when people ask me that. He said science is like sex. It is useful, but it's not that the reason we do it. So with science, it's very similar. With math, it's similar. Maybe useful themes come out, but it's not the reason I do math. I love it. I, I, I like it. You can call me freak, and you're probably right. But we'll start with a monologue I did in this uh, context. It's about uh, theorems, I say. it, And what things are forever, you know? They say diamonds are forever. You remember James Bond? They say diamonds are forever, but I mean, yeah. Depends what you mean by forever. Theorems. That's forever. Theorems are forever, and I would take Pythagoras' theorem, you know? That's true even if Pythagoras himself is there. I can show you. Whenever there are two nice legs on the right angle and a good hypotenuse, Pythagoras' theorem works. And mathematicians do theorems, which is eternal truths. Uh, but it's not always easy to know what is an eternal truth, what is a theorem and what is just a conjecture. We need an actual proof for that. Oh, think about, imagine we want to cover a plane, a big plane, a very big plane, an infinite plane, with uh, identical pieces, leaving no gaps. We can use squares. Everyone imagines that, right? We can use triangles. We cannot use circles, they leave gaps. What's the best piece we can use? Papus of Alexandria, in year 300, said the best piece, the one that covers a given surface with the smallest boundary, is an hexagon. But he couldn't prove it. It was just a conjecture. It was the honeycomb conjecture. The world then divided between papists and anti-papists until 1,700 years later, Thomas Hales, a British man, he gave an actual proof that Papus and the bees were right, that hexagon is the best piece. So it became a theorem, the honeycomb theorem, that will last forever and ever, more than any diamond. But what if we want to go to three dimensions? How can we fill the space with identical pieces leaving no gaps? We can use cubes, right? We cannot use spheres, because they leave gaps. What is the best piece we can use? The one that covers, the, the fills a given space with the smallest surface? Lord Kelvin, the Greek Kelvin guy, you know him? He said the best thing was to use a truncated octahedron. Everyone knows how it's done, right? Like this. Everyone has a truncated octahedron at home, right? I have two. There's another one. So, but he couldn't prove it. It was just a conjecture. It was Kelvin's conjecture. So the world then divided between Kelvinists and anti-Kelvinists until 
until more than 100 years later, Wayne and Felon, Irishmen, they found a better structure. This little pretty thing here, to which they gave the groundbreaking name of Wayne Felon structure. It fills the space, it looks strange, and it's funny that it was used to build the aquatic center for the Olympic Games in Beijing. There, in that aquatic center, Michael Phelps won eight gold medals, becoming the best swimmer of all time. Yeah, the best swimmer of all time until a better one shows up, right? Same thing that happens to this one. But this has the chance that someone, maybe in 100 years, maybe in 1,700 years, gives an actual proof that this is the best possible piece. And it will become a theorem. So, if you want to tell someone that you love them forever, give them a diamond. But if you want to tell them that you love them forever and ever, give them a theorem. But you have to prove it. Don't let your love be just a conjecture. Thank you. <laughs> So that was math. <laughs> no science. <laughs> so thank you very much, Eduardo. Okay, it's time to finish. Uh, I just want to thank uh, first every speaker of the morning session and the afternoon session. Thank you very much.